Hello and welcome to the Kemanas Park Highlight Show. This week, we'll recap the race card from Saturday, November 11. A total of 10 races were contested. This was a memorable day of horse racing at Kemanas Park where we were able to witness Brian Spuddy Rickman teaming up in the cons box with lead track announcer out of Gulfstream Park, the smooth Pete Aiello. Let's begin our recap of this weekend's racing with race one. This was the Lotto Trophy, a three years old and up claiming event going 1300 meters. An 11 horse field reduced to 10 with a scratch of a secret traveler from the 11 draw. Michael Sims is ready. They're off for the first. And right away, Storm presses the eject button and gets rid of the rider as they charge past the six. Dent Street is battling early for that lead, the casual affair right alongside. Ras Emanuel moving with them, just about a half a length separates the first three as they go flashing past the five. Modern Miracle is three lengths in behind them, Ajita now making improvement on the rail, turn on the light, splitting those horses. Inspired Miracle races up with Fault Line, uh, then Sir John, as they arrive at the half mile and go rushing into the turn. Seven sixteenths of a mile to run in the first, and Ras Emanuel now ekes out the lead by just over a length. Casual Affair continues to chase in second as they go blasting past the three. Turn on the light, switched on on the outside, and now wound up for more run. Dent Street has made progress. Ajita is on the rail, five or six off that lead. Modern Miracle racing on the outside. Sir John racing for the back with Inspired Miracle. Fault Line is next at the back of the field, but Ras Emanuel, the rider, has a peep in his mirrors, and Ras Emanuel turns on with three sixteenths remaining. Oh, Opening up what could be an unstoppable advantage. A jeter on the far side with inspired miracle. Here is Sir John in the green silks now asked to kick in late. But it is Ras Emanuel with a clear advantage. A 16th to run. Ras Emanuel and Robert Halladine have opened up some four or five lengths. There's no catching Ras Emanuel. He's tying up in the end but will get there done more than enough to win it over Sir John. Then inspired miracle. Modern miracle. Ajita is fifth. Robert Halladin again looking confident in the saddle since his return to riding at Kimanos Park, powering the 7-1 Ras Emanuel to victory by one and three quarters of a length ahead of Sir John in second. Race 2 was the third running of the BGLC Toba Jamboree Sprint, a maiden special weight event for native bred two-year-olds. Queen of Soul from the five box was the one to five favorite. On commentary for this one was Pete Aiello with his Kimanos Park debut race call. Racing in the BGLC Toba Jamboree Sprint. Not an especially quick beginning for Queen of Soul, but Halladine's on the go with Fast and Furious Lynx, who poaches a two-length advantage in a hurry. Up to the outside, Queen of Soul is now rushed into second. Rosetta is at the rail. In between horses, Warrior Stomp shuffled to fourth. Length and a half back to Hamaya and Matuso as last of all as they swing to the far turn. Fast and furious length, sharp so far. Into the turn on top by two, Queen of Soul second. Rosetta moving up the inside and up into second now. These top three have seven on our fourth running Warrior Stomp. Matuso is a long way behind with Hamaya as they run to the top of the stretch. This big favorite Queen of Soul better hurry up as Fast and Furious Links at the 5 sixteenths on top two and a half. The stable mate Rosetta takes up the slack second and they're at the top of the stretch. Here comes Rosetta to engage Fast and Furious Links. Halladine throws across at Fast and Furious Links. She's still the leader. Rosetta runs at her on the outside second. Queen of Soul's been defeated. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Jason DaCosta, 1-2. Fast and Furious Lynx responding to challenges. Rosetta one more time. Rosetta starts to get to her. Fast and Furious Lynx driven out. Fast and Furious Lynx digging in. On the outside, Rosetta's at a time. Fast and Furious Lynx went down the road. Rosetta was second from Matuso, who was up for third. This big favorite, Queen of Soul, floundered late. She finished fourth. A gate to finish on a natural double for jockey Robert Hardball Halladin. Aboard the Jason Acosta conditioned Fast and Furious Link, who stopped the clock at a 1 minute and a 15 seconds flat. Race 3, the Pick 3 Trophy, was a restricted allowance event going 1,000 meters straight. A 7 horse field was declared to start with the imported Talona, a clear 3 to 5 favorite in the betting. And they're off! From the center, Talona gets the first call and goes looking for the early lead. Babylon will fall, got away well on the outside. Phenomener's a bit slow into stride, beaten for speed well down toward the inside. Then it's AKA Storm and Tigre Express. Great Trick has no early speed and tacking over to the outside, Ava Jalen just ahead of him as they come down past the opening eighth of a mile. 
Up in the center, Babylon will fall, doing battle with Talona. These two kick on. Phenomena is back to third. Tigre Express is there, fourth with AKA Storm. Ava Javelin has a lot of ground to make up, and so does Great Trick. Outrun in the early stages here, as Phenomena now splits horses to go after Talona. They come past the quarter pole now, and the leader is Talona, under pressure to hold it. Phenomena is second, down the center, and coming on a bit as Babylon will fall. Talona, the public pick under O'Neill Mullings, driven out. Up on the outside, it's now second to Babylon will fall. Phenomena is back to third, but the betters had it right. Talona making four to five look like easy money by three in the end. Babylon will fall second, a.k.a. Storm finished third. Phenomena back to fourth. That's the third. Talona makes it easy money in the third with a convincing win over second place finisher Babylon Will Fall, aka Storm in third, and a Phenometer closing out the top four finishers. Race four, the Pick Four Trophy, another restricted allowance event, this time going a mile or 1600 meters with a 10 horse field declared to start. Leading rider Rayan Lewis, the mount of the four to five favorite, Life is Life. They're off. Blowing the start badly, here comes Doc about seven lengths slow. From the outside, Golden Royalty was away alertly and right to the early lead. May Sellington has speed and Warhorse mixing it up from between as they run out of the one-mile shoot. It's Golden Royalty and on the inside, Warhorse. Their heads apart for the top. Mo Aviator and May Sellington racing into third and fourth. Life is life. The favorite is out in the center in the clear. Power of Her Highness is between horses. A gap of two and a half more to Mr. Senator, then slam dunk. He's off the speed third last. Second last is Moneybox, and the trailer is Here Comes Doc. They approach the 5 8 and up top, the leader is still up top. It's War Horse a mile length and a quarter. Out the center, Life is Life gets a beautiful drafting trip. He's in the clear on the outside and beginning to make a move. From between horses, Power of Her Highness is right there with Mo Aviator at the rail. Running home a bit from the back is Mr. Senator passing May Sellington. Golden Royalty puts the cue in the rack. Down inside goes Here Comes Doc. At the back are Slam Dunk and Moneybox. Around the far turn at the three furlong point. Still up front, War Horse and Parchment trying to hold firm. Life is life driven second up on the outside. Mr. Senator now third. Here comes Doc starts to run home again with a less than a quarter of a mile to come. Up front, War Horse still the target trying to spring the upset. Driven on the outside, Life is Life tries to go get him. Wide of them and Mr. Senator up the inside. Here comes Doc. He's rolling home with an eighth of a mile to go. Who do you like here? Inside, here comes Doc takes the lead and here comes Doc moving clear. Life is Life trying to get into second right alongside War Horse. Late run from May Sellington with a 16th to go. The upset is on. Here comes Doc driven out. Here comes Doc and jockey Tevin Foster to win it by five in the end. Life is Life was second. May Sellington finished third. Fourth was War Horse. Then Mr. Senator in the fourth. Tevin Foster upsets the apple card with a long 20 to 1 shot on board. Here comes Doc beating all the favorites with a win margin of five lengths in one minute 42 and a three fifths of a second flat over the one mile course. Saturday's fifth event was the Super Lotto Trophy, a restricted allowance event going five and a half furlongs. A 13 horse field reduced to 11 with a scratch of Millennium Star from the nine bots and the Principal Tiffany from the 13 draw. In field nine, and they're off. 1100 meters, Hunzer is the one that came off in a stuttering start. As they charge down and leave the five, Traveler's Lodge grabs that lead, attacked early by Best Daughter-in-Law. And Best Daughter-in-Law now picks up that lead and opens up a gap over Traveler's Lodge racing in second as they hit the half mile and swing into that turn for home. A break of three to a bunch of horses. Tap it good rushing down into third ahead of King Air in the red sleeves on the rail. Mini Dewak races up next in the yellow. These are followed up by the gifted one. Diamond Rock races as they have left the three. Huns are trying to close up on the outside. Ahmed Ali is the one right against the rail. Oh so long toward the back and without remorse trails as the field come thundering into the top of the lane. They've got to catch best daughter-in-law the favorite and she's opened up a gap over the field. Tap it good is under the stick and trying to close but best daughter-in-law is full of run now getting a touch of that right hand stick as they arrive at the furlong pole. It is best daughter-in-law here is Hunza now launching a serious attack. Best daughter-in-law running on fumes and now falls like a dead bird as Hunza comes scooting by on the outside and Hunza is running away from them in the end. Hunza will come away on the devastating Dane Dawkins to win by maybe seven. It's close between Diamond Rock on the rail. Best daughter-in-law. It's also a three-way photo with Ahmed Ali, the gifted one in between horses and on the rail King Air. Trainer Philip Elliott gets his first win on the Saturday card with his four-year-old chestnut colt Hunza 
coming in at odds of 7 to 1 with the champion jockey Dame Dawkins in the saddle. We take a break from this first segment of our highlights package and when we return we'll recap the remainder of the races on the card. Welcome back to the Kimanas Highlight Show. We continue with the remaining races on the card from Saturday, November 11, picking up at race 6. This was a restricted maiden condition event, the Cash Pot Trophy. All 15 horses declared to start. Trainer Stephen Todd's air to go. The mount of Dane Dawkins was the hot 8 to 5 favorite in the betting. They're off. Uncle Sil has an awful beginning and gives the rest a huge advantage as Miss Linton comes away with that lead. Ertigal racing down on the outside. Zane's Princess is next. Beautiful Moon in a handy spot. She's alone now picking off runners on the outside. Maybe four and a half length separates that bunch. They're tracked by a dream warrior. Xylophonic Steel is next. Here comes Ken in the yellow with a green cap to kill a mockingbird. Now beginning to make some late progress as they leave the half mile pole. Security Code is now overtaken by a Juby Wap Wap. Oh my, racing down on the outside. Security code fading back, overtaken by little Miss Nisha. Toward the back of the field, Tequila Flight, and a long way last to the awful beginning of Uncle Sill. They leave the 5-16th, they're coming into the lane, they're at the top of it, and Miss Linton has them off their legs and holds the advantage. The rider becoming a busy man, Miss Linton gets a crack or two of the right-hand stick. Zane's Princess under a vigorous ride over against the rail. Ertigal in the center also asks for everything, but can they catch Miss Linton and Ramon Napier? It doesn't seem possible, Miss Linton not showing any signs of stress, and Miss Linton begins to open up inside the final 16th. The chase is on for a minor share. Miss Linton will romp the event. Dream Warrior running on will grab second. Urchigal in a photo with Oh My. Here comes Kenny's next, possibly ahead of Zane's Princess. Miss Linton gets a clean break at the start and with that showed the rest of the field a clean pair of heels from gate to wire in what was an 8 length win margin in front of second place finisher Dream Warrior. Oh My was in third and the favorite Urchigal in fourth. Race number seven was the Elizabeth Distaff. An overnight allowance event for three-year-olds and up, fillies and mares only. The favorite, Desert of Malibu, looking to make it four wins from four starts at Caymanus Park. They're racing in the St. Elizabeth Distaff. Excellent beginning outside for Desert of Malibu. She was quick in the stride, and she settles into a nice rhythm, working a length in front early. Baby Like now moves to take second. From between horses, that's Luxol in early third. American Tap fourth at the inside, in hand at this stage, with Ronnie Bengala working out the center. Out the back early, the trailers are Sister and Treasure, Outbitter, and Ring Charmer. Down the back stretch they go. American Tap moving through inside of Desert of Malibu. Desert of Malibu leads by a neck. American Tap is second. Up to the outside, and now third is Luxol toward the inside. Baby Lake is now fourth. Ronnie Bengala just lost a position. She was passed by Sister and Treasure. Second last is Outbitter, and the trailer is Ring Charmer. They leave the backstretch and move now into the far turn, less than half a mile to go. Desert of Malibu and Dane Dawkins get serious. They open now a length and a half on American Tap, who's angled off the inside to make her bid second. Two and a half back to Baby Lake. She's now third, driven and dropping back is Luxol. Ronnie Bangala has a lot to do, but she's underway. Eight lengths off the speed with five sixteenths to go. Desert of Malibu trying to stretch her speed. She's off the turn, two lengths better than American Tap, and they start to get away from the others. Less than a quarter of a mile to come in the St. Elizabeth Distaff, and they're on their way home. Desert of Malibu. Dawkins asked her to finish what she started. She's an eighth of a mile from home, and she's still well clear. American Tap tried but couldn't get to her. Up the inside, Baby Lake running a giant race. Sister and Treasure and Outbitter are next. But inside the final 16th, she'll go four for four. She's undefeated. She's Desert of Malibu, an authoritative winner of the St. Elizabeth Distaff by five in the end. Baby Lake at a big price for second. It's close for third. Photo between American Tap and Sister and Treasure. No doubt about the winner. She's good. Real good. Desert of Malibu. Another great race call by Pete Aiello complimenting the impressive Desert of Malibu who now has four consecutive wins from four starts locally. Second place went to Baby Like, Sister in Treasure third and American Tap in fourth. Race 8 and the day's feature was the Jamaica Cup, a grade 1 event with the likes of Blue Vinyl, 
further and beyond and the reigning horse of the year atomica going head to head the duo of pete aiello and brian rickman teamed up for this one and they're off in the third running of the jamaica cup from the fence, Runaway Algo comes out firing, and in hand, second is Blue Vinyl, and up to third goes Atomica. Away in fourth is further in beyond. Second last early to head Cornerstone, and Miniature Man is last of the half dozen as they charge into the clubhouse turn. The three favorites almost three in line, with Runaway Algo holding inside position and the lead. Atomica forcing the issue three wide, and Patterson has a decision to make on Blue Vinyl. Will he sit or will he go with them? He's going to go with them. So the three favorites, they drop the gloves early as they complete the opening quarter. Into the backstretch as one. It's Atomica three wide. Blue Vinyl in the two path. Runaway Algo pushing along at the inside. These three have opened a big advantage on Miniature Man outside the head cornerstone and further in beyond races between as they head to the 5 8. Atomica takes the lead. She's now a neck in front of Blue Vinyl. They've gone two and a half better than Runaway Algo. It's a big gap to Miniature Man who's underway while fourth, then to head cornerstone. The trailer further in beyond. As they race away now toward the final half of a mile in the Jamaica Cup and the battle up front continues. Blue Vinyl now giving way. Atomica Ross to pick it up and Atomica now goes on as they lead the 7-16th. Blue Vinyl backing out into second. Runaway Algo needs to find six to get to Atomica. A huge gap opens up to Miniature Man the head cornerstone and forget further and beyond as the pace increases at the 5-16th. They're coming into the lane and the super filly Atomica looking to hit. Five from five. They're coming into it now. It's Atomica. Blue Vinyl throwing them the challenge on the outside. Atomica continues to hold the advantage in the Jamaica Cup. It's Atomica under the left-hand stick, running to the furlong pole. Blue Vinyl drifting off a true line. Atomica continues to run straight and true. A furlong to catch her. Can Blue Vinyl do it? He's the only one who can. They race toward the final 16th. It is Atomica and devastating Dane Dawkins. Atomica, the nuclear powered filly, will take the third running of the Jamaica Cup by three or four of a Blue Vinyl. Then Miniature Man Runaway Algo, the head cornerstone, and further and beyond yet to finish. Another explosive win by the reigning horse of the year, Atomica, and a third win on the card for champion jockey Dean Dawkins. The ninth event on Saturday was the third running of the Port Royal Sprint, a grade one event going 1,200 meters or six furlongs. Robert Halden looking for a third win aboard the one to two favorite, Mahogany. Uh, they're off for the Port Royal Sprint. Ability just misses it. Rajon the Pilot and Mahogany all get good breaks. Generational is running quickly. Uh, there goes Madeline Sunshine, and Madeline Sunshine is the one now who streaks through to get that lead as they leave the five. Mahogany going in chase in second, Generational racing on the rail. I Am Fred is in a close position in fourth, just about four and a half lengths racing off that lead. I've got Magic is further back as they leave the half mile, Freedom Street right on the tail end of those. In behind those, God of Love races up, King Arthur is running right against the fence as they make their way now, flashing past the 3 8 pole. Ability now begins to make a big run with a perfect brew. Rajon the pilot in that grouping of horses and toward the back of the field going nowhere. Is that a fact as they come thundering into the top of the lane in the third running of the Port Royal Sprint? They arrive at the 316th and over on the rail and traveling powerfully. That's Madeline Sunshine Mahogany now coming on the outside. It's Madeline Sunshine driven to the max. Mahogany right there. They make eye contact briefly and now Mahogany snatches the lead. They're inside the Final 16th. It is the big horse and the favorite Mahogany coming away to win the third running of the Port Royal Sprint. Finishing in second, Madeline Sunshine, close between I Am Fred and Perfect Brew. I've got Magic is back in fifth. Robert Haldin takes the Port Royal Sprint, landing his third win on the card aboard Ian Passad's six year old gelding, Mahogany, who covered the distance in one minute and 12 seconds flat. The 10th and final was the Money Time Trophy, a restricted stakes event going a distance of 1,300 meters. All 14 horses declared to start with the race call, where the ace duel teaming up to close the day. And runners away. The favorite captain Calico was slow to break, so was Sensational Move at the back of the group. 
Up front, here's Julius Golden firing forward for a narrow lead. Down inside, it's the central quality. Acknowledge me, he's going to have to work between horses. Princess Sharon, well situated on the outside. After the slow break, Captain Calico is down inside, followed by Awesome Anthony. Getting started on the outside and trying to move forward. That's Strike Smart, about six lengths behind. A gap of another two to Burlap. Then it's Divine Force and Wayne's Princess. Out the back, the trailer is Burning Valor. As they come flashing past the 716th and make their way now toward the three, Acknowledge Me has now taken that lead. Princess Sharon now wound up on the outside and breathing down the neck of the leader. And now Princess Sharon kicks and grabs that lead as they leave the 516th. Acknowledge Me trying to fight back down against the rail, but turning for home. That's Princess Sharon at the top of the lane. Acknowledge me in the red cap over against the rail here. Now is Sensational Move moving swiftly on the outside and Sensational Move now takes that lead from Princess Sharon. It is Sensational Move beginning to open up the throttle. Inside the final furlong it is Sensational Move. This is the Money Time Trophy and Sensational Move is coming away on the Rudolph page and Sensational Move will take it. Princess Sharon battling, looks to hold second over Captain Calico, then Norblar and Divine Force. Pete Aiello and Brian Rickman with another brilliant call from the comms bots for the 10th and final race, where the outsider sensational move from the Gary Sabrati stables was able to land a 62 to 1 blow for the curtain closer. As we recap another exciting weekend of racing, we want to make special mention of Pete Aiello's visit to Kimanas Park and also the memorable performances on the card throughout the entire day. This has been another edition of the Kimanas Park Highlight Show. See you next time.